Now, being forced to slow down because your hips have worn out is something you might expect in your 70s, certainly not in your 30s. He runs marathons and climbs mountains, but Ian's particular passion is wakeboarding, an extreme and risky form of water skiing. But the onset of an inherited bone disease means that without surgery, he'll be left crippled. I sort of set a, a yardstick at when I could no longer walk two miles comfortably, that I'd do something about it. So now I do feel it's time, time to have it done before I can no longer walk at all. The pain in his hip has become so bad that everyday activity is agony. It's like a constant ache and whenever I walk or the more I exercise, the more the pain increases. I guess I've had the pain in my hip for probably for over the last 10 years and now it's, instead of just gradually getting worse, it seems to be deteriorating quite rapidly. Can you feel me touching you? Yeah. Okay. Can you move your toes up and down for me? He does get frustrated um, with some of the things that he's not able to do. Even things like going on a family bike ride, the pain he's in afterwards, and it, it does get to him. He finds it hard not to be able to do, do those things he thought of as normal before. Ian suffers from osteoarthritis of the hip, a condition you'd expect in someone of 78, not 38. The cartilage in his hip socket has worn away, leaving only bone grating on bone whenever he moves. The kind of operation we're doing today on uh, Mr Collins is an operation called a hip resurfacing. And what happens is that uh, instead of actually removing this femoral neck, uh, you actually trim the femoral neck and put the implant on top of it like that. And that operation is, we prefer for younger, more active males because it doesn't remove so much bone. Without the operation, Ian will almost certainly lose his job in the Royal Air Force. I'm not able to, uh, currently, to sign on for a, a further term a longer engagement so I'm hoping that all round the operation will enable me to continue my career or at least give me the option to stay in the Air Force and carry out my full duties again. But returning to his job is not Ian's only motive for this risky surgery. I prefer it if he didn't return to wakeboarding but then I'd prefer anyone who was uh, wakeboarding probably not to return to it. Seems like an alarming activity for anyone let alone with a hip resurfacing. The wakeboarding is, is one of the biggest passions I have both uh, myself and my wife and my family. I'm definitely going to take his advice and take it easy when I go back to it, yes. Ian might be looking forward to being dragged behind a speedboat, but the following morning he's not so glad on being dragged down to theatre. He doesn't like anything medical whatsoever, so he has really struggled and it's been a case of putting his head in the sand up until the last few days, um, when he did get very, very nervous about actually having it done. Um don't want to feel any of the pain or be aware of the operation. I'm quite squeamish about things like that. In the circumstances, it's probably a good job Ian can't see the tools that are going to be used on him. The surgery is not for the faint-hearted. Things uh, can go wrong in this operation. Um, it is major orthopaedic surgery and the, uh, the main uh, complication is actually a fracture of the femoral neck, which is, which is an actual damage to the bone that's supporting the uh, spherical implant. Um, it's never happened to me uh, yet, I'm delighted to say, but clearly it's something we must all, all be mindful of. Mr Banks makes a precise eight-inch incision in order to reach the hip joint. At the start, we're, we're, we're just really exposing the hip so we can actually put the bits in. We're working behind the big muscles, the glute gluteal muscles, that are actually responsible for making you walk properly. Several medical students are on hand to help pull Ian's hip out of joint. Good, so I'm now going to dislocate the hip. The main problem with medical students is if they faint and pass out. The next section of film is fairly graphic. You may want to look away. Good, hang on to that please, Hannah. So we, we, we tell them to leave promptly if they start feeling unwell. Great, let's have the fearful device then. Here we go. These are colloquially known as cheese graters. That, uh, they make a noise like that. As Mr Banks gets down to some serious work, Ian is blissfully unaware. For the last 15 minutes, he's been snoring like a trooper. Ian's definitely unaware of what's going on there in theatre. We'll catch up with him later. So Andy, tell us, are you a snorer? All morning, Nikki's been trying to convince me that I'm a snorer. I'm not a snorer, Nikki, for sure. I think you'd be a polite snorer. Uh, well, come on then. Are you a snorer? 
Ladies don't snore, Andy. You should know that. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Back now to Ian. Climbing mountains and being dragged behind speedboats holds no fear for this man. However, recently he's been finding DIY tools quite scary. I've got some work colleagues who were at uh, great pains to tell me exactly what sort of tools that the surgeon was going to use, despite the fact that I didn't want to know whatsoever what he was going to use on me. They were producing mallets and all sorts of things. So you've got a big mallet. We've got a special mallet that's bigger than usual. This is an 800 gram mallet. So I get it going with my weaker left hand and then when I think I've got things going in the reasonable alignment, I usually swap over. Thankfully, Ian's anaesthetist has made completely sure his patient is out for the count. So much so that Ian's now snoring loudly. Ian suffers from osteoarthritis, an inherited bone condition that means the cartilage or padding between the ball and socket on his left hip has completely worn away. Mr Banks is going to resurface both parts of the damaged joint with metal. Your average chippy would certainly recognise the techniques used in some parts of this operation. I've learnt most of my... Well, I don't do DIY anymore anyway because I'm worried that it's, I'm going to injure my hands. But certainly when, in the days when I did do DIY, I learnt it mainly from orthopaedics rather than the other way around. It's got a good hard bone. Sore, please. Mr Banks is finally ready to guide Ian's new socket lining into place. This is a socket and it's got this rough surface and it's also got this white coating and this encourages the bone to grow into the implant therefore holding it in and keeping so that it actually becomes part of the patient's body. Mallet, please. It should go in with a bit of gentle persuasion now. With the replacement socket in place, Mr Banks is now ready to fit the alloy metal ball to the top of Ian's leg bone. We've spent a lot of time just trimming the, the top of um, the femur so this implant just sits straight on top of it and we fill it with bone cement, uh, which has been in use in orthopaedics for over 40 years and works very well. With the replacement ball and socket now fitted, Mr Banks must fully test the synthetic joint. You may wish to look away for the next 30 seconds. OK, well, we just put the hip back in now um, and making sure these legs are the same length, which they are. The tension in the hip feels very nice. He's certainly stable, so he can extend his hip to 30 degrees, which is more than he could before he started the operation. And he's very stable in flexion. You know, and it's not remotely coming out. It's really in quite an extreme position there. And the hip is very stable. So you should be very happy with it. And that's sort of it done, really. Two days later, Mr Banks has come to see Ian and his wife, nice Anne. Nice, sis. Hi. How are you doing? Well, your went really, really well. This is our skeleton here. There's the head, the chest. There's the pelvis. There's the hip joint. And so the ball goes on the top of the ball of the femur like that. And then the socket, if we unscrewed it, goes in the socket there. So the new hip joint is metal on metal. How long will it be then till I can resume exercise, reasonably strenuous exercise, say squash or go back to water skiing perhaps? Young patients such as you really recover from this kind of surgery very, very quickly. And the main problem is, is actually trying to hold you back. But Ian is raring to get back on his feet again. I'll have to keep an eye on him to make sure that he doesn't do anything that he, sh he shouldn't basically, like taking it too far with their wakeboarding and water skiing. So we'll have to keep a close eye on him. My wife's been a great support to me whilst I've been here. She's taken time off work, arranged for the children to be looked after. She's come down and she's constantly been by my side whilst I've been recovering after the operation. She's even helped me put my slippers on. For the next six to eight weeks, I'm going to be rehabilitating mainly the use of uh, these sticks, which will be to the amusement of uh, not only my brothers, but my friends as well. Less than a week after surgery, Ian's off home. For a man on sticks, he's exiting the hospital at record speed, leaving Anne trailing behind with the latest copies of his extreme sports magazines. He's still the fastest man on crutches, but hasn't got back on his wakeboard just yet. I get the feeling it won't be too long. <laughs>